sisters wherever you're streaming from tonight it's sisters night it's a glorious day it's a beautiful day to praise God to lift him up and give him all the glory that he deserves amen thank you God would you clap Woo. we praise you Lord one more time in your hands in your home we clap
Your mercy is on you every day, God. Your goodness is here, God. Your faithfulness, your kindness, your patience, your presence, God. Would you fall like rain, God, in every home, in every person streaming, God, whatever device they may have, your presence touches, God. Heal us, God. Restore us, God. And do what only you can do, Jesus. As we worship you. We sing, everything starts. Everything starts in you. Made to be beautiful. Nothing could tear your heart from the covenant you made for love. See, everything moves. Everything moves in time. Put your voice. Relating to your design. Nothing could tear your heart from the world you died to save. With hands lifted, we're saying, You fall like.
mountains melt, yes they do, oh, like rats before you, your kingdom rests in everlasting grace and wonder. you God in your presence every trial every problem every anxiety every sickness all melts in your presence God hope is in you Jesus this is a new day we declare it we speak it Jesus thank you for new hope you say the crushing in the crushing in the pressing, you are making you one. In the soil, now surrender, you are breaking new ground. So I yield to you and to your care. And I trust you, I don't need to understand. You sing it off. Make me a vessel. Make me an offering. Make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing. And all you have given me, Jesus, me. In the pressing, pressing, you are making me In the soil, I now surrender. You are breaking me ground. In Jesus' name, yeah. you are breaking me ground. Won't you make me? Make me your vessel. Make me enough for me. Make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing, and all you have given me, Jesus, bring you right out of me. Speak it over your life, Jesus. Jesus, bring. Make me your vessel. Make me your vessel. Make it your song. Make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. Lord, I came here with nothing. And all you have given me, Jesus, bring you Jesus, 
refreshing time in God's presence here tonight. You know, I love the song that we just sang, especially the words that say, when I trust you, I don't need to understand. You know, in this season that we find ourselves in right now, there's so much that we might not understand. There's so much doubt. There's so much fear. There's so much anxiety and so much uncertainty about the future. But ladies, tonight we can remember that God is still in control. And because God is still in control, we can put our hope in Him, we can put our trust in Him to do something new in our lives. Amen. I love what you're saying tonight, Songs, because for so many of us, this has felt like a crushing season. Yeah. For so many of us, we've been pressed on every side, but like we've sung tonight, in the crushing and in the pressing, God does something new. And Amen. it makes me think of a beautiful scripture in Isaiah 40 verse 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Amen. So, ladies, tonight, if you want to, if you need your strength renewed because you feel like you've been crushed under the stress and anxiety of COVID or the burden of losing a loved one, or maybe you've been pressed from every side because of financial pressure or relationship stress or trying to navigate homeschooling and a trick online, put your hope in God tonight yeah, as Songke prays for us. Amen. Come on, ladies, let's lift up our hands as an act of surrender as we trust. God. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for each and every single gorgeous girl that is gathered here tonight. Father, we thank you that you know us personally and that you know our needs and what we're trusting you for. Father, tonight we lift up those who have lost loved ones because of COVID or anything else, Lord. We pray for your peace and your comfort over them. We ask that you would surround them and engulf them with your love, Father God. Father, we pray for those who are trusting you for healing, Father God. We pray that you would just free them from all pain, from all sickness, from all disease, Father God. We're just just trusting you for breakthrough. And Father, we pray for those who are trusting you for finances, Lord. We just pray that you would provide finances, Father God, where they're needed. We pray that in their lack, Father God, that you would come through for them as Jehovah Jireh. Father, we pray for relationships that might be strained, Lord. Father, we pray for restoration. We ask that you would heal those broken down relationships, Father God. And Lord, tonight we just pray for your safety and your protection over each and every single one of us. We pray that you would give us your divine wisdom as we go about our each and every single day, Father God. Keep us safe and protected and give us your peace, Father God. Lord, we thank you for everything that you're going to do. We're waiting in expectation for you to do something new in our lives and in our situations. Father, we thank you for this in Jesus' name. And all God's gorgeous girls said, amen, amen. and amen. 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 Well, ladies, how incredible is it that we are able to gather together again tonight? And it's such a special night. We're in for such a treat, aren't we, Pastor Nat? That's right, Songs. There is nothing like God's gorgeous girls gathering together. And tonight, with some of our staff girls in the building, we are streaming live from the Stanton campus. <laughs> across all of our five campuses. So maybe tonight you have joined us from Joburg Centurion, you've got your favorite slippers on, you've got a coffee and a warm blankie, or maybe you've joined us from our coastal campuses, Durban, North and Belito, and you're in your costume because you don't know what cold is. It is so good to have you with us tonight. And a very special warm welcome if you've joined us for the very first time. Yes, that's right. We love having first time visitors. We would love to connect with you, maybe in the comments, let us know, or you can click on the link and you'll be able to get to our visitors brochure Show, which will tell you a little bit more about who we are as a church. Now, Pastor Nats, tonight is very special for many different reasons. That's right, Sonke. There are many special things happening. Not only is it our mad launch night, which is our highlight on the sister's calendar, it's also Pastor Andre's birthday. Woo! Happy birthday, Pastor Andre. We celebrate you and honor you. And ladies, why don't you show Pastor Andre some love in the comment section tonight? Woo! Happy birthday, Pastor Andre. Thank you for everything. Speaking of the magazine launch, we have got a drive through happening tomorrow. That's right. We didn't want to miss out on an opportunity to see your beautiful, special faces. I know that Belito had theirs today. Yes. And Durban North, along with um, Sanson, will be having theirs tomorrow. Um, obviously, we can't meet in person, but we will. Uh, we can't meet in person tonight, but tomorrow it will be a drive through. We will adhere to all COVID protocols. And um, come, we are so excited to see you and for you to pick up your Sisters of Africa magazine. Yes, that's right. What an exciting time. And, you know, speaking of the Sisters, 
Sisters of Africa magazine. I'm so excited for Sisters of Africa conference coming up soon. And I'm sure you are too, ladies. So let's take a look at this promo. created man was the one thing that he placed his hands upon man was the one thing that he handled that he touched that is why you and I will always have this innate longing for the touch of God when it comes to serving this omnipotent omniscient God of the universe the architect of all time the one who strung the stars in the sky he does not need your history it doesn't matter what province you were born in it doesn't matter what education you have the only requirement required to worship God is breath God himself knit you and I together in your mother's womb he actually made your frame and therefore he now asks us as daughters of the king to be the ones that helps to close that frame in truth and in love and in hope. God is always at work, girls. And even when we can't see the whole story, His goodness will always shine through. Tough women last. Tough times don't. In Jesus' name, amen. Sure, so exciting can't wait for the magazine launch in only a few minutes time but uh, it's so awesome to be back at Sisters and um, it's my privilege to be receiving the offering tonight and uh, it's 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 a little bit different I mean we got all excited last month to be back in the building and uh, there's a few of us here tonight but we'll get there we'll get there eventually it's gonna get better um, but as we come around the giving tonight um, I wanted to share a little story about um, something I used to do as a kid. So one of the worst kept secrets about me is that I'm a brown belt in karate. So I think there's some things you do or learn in childhood that they leave with a lasting impact on you, um, but perhaps you don't really realize how much of an impact is left on you until much later. In my particular case, it was when I was in physio about two and a half years ago and learning to walk again. And I record my therapist commented on, she told me that despite the difficulties if she told me to position or place my body, hands, feet, or whatever, she was like, it's amazing, you just do it. And I was like, isn't that like what you're supposed to do? I, I don't really see what's so special about that kind of thing. And she said, no, it was the precise movements that I was attentive to, that's what stood out to her. So I was staying in place when it was necessary, moving certain body parts while keeping others still like I was supposed to, the positioning, immediately knowing when I hadn't done a movement right, and all that sort of stuff. And then I remembered in my lessons. So in karate, the sensei would often make us hold our stances or um, our moves in the kata, and then he would come and he would adjust us. And it would be annoyingly silly, simple things. He'd like move your head a little bit, he'd like lift your arms up, um, your toes are pointing the wrong way, they need to be more straight. Um, tiny and silly, silly things, the space between your knees, how, how low or high your hands are. These things were somehow very, very important because if you wanted to get your next belt, if you wanted to pass, if you wanted to, com to complete the kata or if you wanted to win the tournament, you had to do all these things. And it seemed so like petty and why would you need to worry about my toes and my fingers? And we were always taught that the mind was the master over the body. You don't tell your, your leg can't tell you, you can't do this kick or it lands badly. You tell your leg it will do this and it will land this way. You, you discipline it, you train it. 
And it's so weird and specific, and these instructions were so bizarre, but they made the biggest difference to your technique in the end when you did the whole thing. And as you went up the belts, um, if what you learned in the basics actually helped you, and it made your fighting much better. So my mind had basically been disciplined to listen to that tiny detail, even all those years later. And the smallest techniques just made the biggest difference. And by the time I was in physio, it was like second nature. So I didn't even realize that it had made an impact on me, even though I started doing that when I was about nine years old. It kind of stuck with me the past while. It really is truly, it's true of our mindset. So the smallest things make a huge difference. Now, seeing as this is the offering, I know what you're thinking. The smallest bit of generosity, and you're absolutely right. It can still be impactful, and um, every little bit of what we give, whether we think it's a drop in the ocean, a brick is made of all the stones that come together, the body is made of every strand of hair, absolutely. Every bit counts, it all makes a difference in the kingdom, absolutely. But it's not just that. The smallest changes to our mindset can make a huge impact. All it takes to touch a life for the kingdom is a seed. A point in the message, a moment in worship, um, a post on Instagram, it really is the smallest things. And sometimes seeds take a while to take root and you really don't see the impact until much, much later. It's how receptive we are to the word or the messages we hear. Sometimes we think, ah, oh, this, this one isn't for me. I know this verse already, or I don't agree with that. I don't actually like that and I'm, not gonna, I'm choosing not to agree with that or believe it. But if you adjust your mindset, open your heart, it'll start to take root. Maybe it's your mindset towards giving lately. Is it worth it? We don't always see the results as we used to. We don't see the building full like we used to. But later, when we are together again, like we were last month, we will be able to see the impact our giving has made during all of this time, over the past year, through all of it. And as discouraging as it is to be closed again, it won't be forever. And in the meantime, we need to keep practicing those little techniques as it were, as we carry on along our way. It says in Matthew 13, verse 31, the kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed that a man took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is larger than all the garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air can come and make nests in its branches, like this tree. We want people to come and make branches and nests and build. As we continue to, as we continue to water this tree, despite not being open, and last month we spoke of recipes and the small things that make a difference. Verse 33 says, he told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, yeast, that a woman took and hid in three measures of flour till it was all leavened. If we remember that it's the small things that can make a difference, we will see how despite difficulties and how different things are right now, that if we've been giving despite all of this and not being in the buildings, lives are still being impacted. People are still being reached, and there are still testimonies being made in this very house. Whether you're reaching out to more people, always, or building those in the house, again, always, we want to keep a house running and functioning. So tonight, I want to encourage you to keep giving and let those little techniques build and develop us. Is that good? Are we ready to give tonight? So we have a variety of ways that we can give. Um, we recommend the Rivers app, but we've also got SnapScan. EFT and credit card. Um, the app is great because it's not just for giving, but if you download it, you can also keep in touch with uh, what's happening in the life of church while we are apart from each other until further notice. Um, I normally give via SnapScan, but I'm going to use the app tonight because there is no code. Oh, there it is, near me. It's too late. I already started. done. Okay. Awesome. You ready? Shall we pray? Father God, thank you, Lord, for showing up, showing yourself to us in the smallest things. Thank you for your provision and that you still hear our prayers and meet all of our needs. Thank you for the partners in the house who continue to give. I pray the giving is used to impact even more lives than we could ever see. Pray that you bless the giving and the givers. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, tonight, before we hear the word, we have a little something that we've put together just to bless everybody. So sit back and enjoy as we have a little item for you.
Wake up and breathe in deeper than yesterday. Wake up the morning, let your soul be your main. Roll down the windows, let your cares fly away. Good things are yours to claim, you don't have to wait. All across the skies, your mercies rise, and the future's bright. This is a new day. Good evening to God's gorgeous girls at home. We were looking forward to a massive birthday party for Pastor Andre tonight, uh, as well as launch the magazine and as well as worship God and sit under the Word. But you know what? The Word actually says man makes their plans, man make their plans, but it's the Lord who guides our path. And so for some reason, we find ourselves back in this place. But we are happy to come to you online and trust that you've already been blessed. I've invited some of the girls in the magazine to join us here and to join Simi as she has just received the offering. Well, let's start. You know, there's something so special about new things, like a new hairstyle. I don't think I've had calls for probably over 30 years. <laughs> but, you know, a new baby, a new home or car, um, what about a new day? There's something exciting, you know, every morning when we wake up, we touch each other and we just say, good morning, Lord, thank you for another day. 
You know, I love this scripture in Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23, and it says, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Now, we're all hoping and praying for the new day when our lives will return to normal. You know, now, what about the concept of renewal? What came to my mind when I started working on this message uh, was that, you know, you, you, you hear people renewing their marriage vows. We have done that several times over the 48 years that we've been married. Um, we renew our commitment to God. That's a beautiful re renewal, isn't that? And, and I know that some renewals are a bit of a pain, like your car license renewal, for instance, because number one, it costs money, and number two, it takes a lot of time, amen? And, but, you know, renewal can also be the most wonderful thing ever. I mean, we just think about spring, when we're going to see our wisteria beginning to grow. This is not the real deal, but, you know, we'll just pretend it is. <laughs> Now, the meaning of renewal, just to help you along a little bit tonight, means restoration, to reintroduce, repeat, recommence, to regenerate, and rekindle. Now, renewal, to me, comes across as having another go, having a second chance. And at the moment, we would all love to have another go at life, to have another go at church, at business, at travel, oh my goodness, and visiting our families. I haven't seen my grandchildren in Belito for a long time, for as long as we all know we've been in lockdown. I have not seen them. And uh, it's hard because you just want to hold them and love them and spend time with them. You know, but we are longing for that new day that God is going to give to us. And at the moment, you know, we've put all our things on hold. Weddings, people with, sadly, who have to attend funerals, it, 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 it's, it's, it's heart-wrenching, and I can just imagine. So, yeah, so, you know, we are so uncertain about the future but we know who holds our future. I mean, we do know that God holds our future. And he is in our future. And he's drawing towards a fantastic future. You know, for, for, for many people who have lost loved ones, they may feel like they need to ride from, rise sorry, they need to rise from the ashes. Perhaps you feel like Job tonight, who, who although he was a righteous man, yet he lost everything. And, and the story of Job is testament of how a person can have another chance at life. He learned so many lessons about renewal. And I've always loved this verse that I want to quote to us tonight because Pastor Andre introduced me to it in one of his messages many, many years ago. It is Job chapter 14, verses 7 to 9, and it says, at least there is hope for a tree. If it is cut down, it will sprout again, and its new sprouts will not fail. Its roots may grow old in the ground, and its stump die in the soil. Its roots may... I just said that. Yet at the scent of water, it will bud and put forth shoots again. Now, you know, that brings me to this thought that for us, the scent of water is the Holy Spirit. It is the word of God. It is the breath of God. And, 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 and that will help us to have another go in our Christian walk, in our walk with God's word, our relationship with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, tonight, either we have been cut down in our hope and faith, because I've heard stories like this, or we, in a moment of weakness, failed God and ourselves. Well, we are the perfect candidates for renewal in one way 
or the other. And the title of tonight's message is Living a Renewed Life. Living a Renewed Life. I wonder if you wouldn't mind just praying with me as we just commit this time and the word to the Lord right now. You can put your hand on your heart. Father God, we welcome you, your Holy Spirit, into our midst. And we just pray that, Lord God, as our hearts begin to open, as we begin to lean in, that you will speak deep into our hearts, into our souls, into our spirits, Lord. We need everything we can get from you, Father God, because you bring newness. By your love, we see newness, as we've even sung tonight. You make us into new vessels, Lord, when we make ourselves available to you, even as we've sung that tonight. And you want to bring new wine and new life out of our beings, Lord God. And so, Lord, yes, make us a vessel. Make us an offering. Make us everything, Lord God, that you want us to be. We commit this time to you, and we commit this word to you. Bring it alive to many, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you are a disciple, think of your own journey. If you are following Jesus, think of that day that you made that commitment. It's the most important day of our lives, amen? You gave your, your heart to Jesus and you were born again. You changed. You became a new person. Now, how did that even happen? It's simple, really. It's a mystery. It's a miracle. But we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. We are new creations meant to keep growing, bearing lasting fruit, seeing seasons of renewal in our lives. You know, some of the last words that Jesus spoke before he left the earth is found in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. He said, so wherever you go, make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You know, Jesus wants disciples. That's what he said, go and make disciples. Amen? He wants disciples. And, and, and people who are born again and transformed are meant to be disciples, not just believers. To be a believer is not enough. You actually believe, then you belong, then you become. And to believe and belong is incomplete. So let's look at how even the demons believe. James chapter 2, verse 19, it says, You say you have faith, for you believe that there is one God. Good for you. I think James is quite cheeky in this translation, the New Living Translation. Well, then he writes, Even the demons believe, and they tremble in terror. Sila, think about that for a moment. See, to be a believer is not enough. And I love the fact that I'm a believer and I'm part of a, a huge family of believers. Amen? But to be born again means I have been renewed in my spirit. It means I'm not who I used to be before. I do not do what I did before. My, 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 I speak differently and I think differently. But you know what? If you have slipped back from where you once were and you feel like a defeated Christian tonight, there is hope for you to experience a renewal. So we're going to look at a few thoughts this evening. I've got four thoughts on how to live a renewed life. Because Pastor Andre always teaches us, don't just share a message. Tell people how to do this. And, and, and that is what I want to do tonight. And I hope I'm helping these gorgeous girls yes. behind me tonight as well. The first thought this evening is renew our thinking. 
Now for many of us, this may be old hat, old news, but it's in the word of God, and the truth is we may know it, but we may not always do it, amen? And so we need to cooperate with the Holy Spirit who comes alongside us. You know, the Holy Spirit is the paraclete. He is our helper. He is the one who brings conviction. Your thoughts are going in a direction that I don't think your father will be happy with. Amen? We need to cooperate with the Holy Spirit because he's going to be helping us. He's going to guide us in the area of our thoughts. Thoughts are like train tracks. They take us somewhere. You know, what are your thoughts about God? Do you, do you have loving thoughts about your Father in heaven? What he's done? I mean, it's, it's a moment that you could just ponder on, write a journal about it, think about it. What do you think about God? What do you think about his word? What do you think about people? What do you think about yourself, your, your past, your future? Just to mention a few things. Now, Paul reminds us about the importance of our thoughts. In Philippians 4, chapter, sorry, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 to 9, he wrote and he says, and now, brothers and sisters, as I close this letter, I find this very interesting because he underlines everything in that whole book of Philippians, and he closes it by saying, let me say this one more thing. Fix your eyes on what is true, sorry, fix your thoughts on what is true and good and right. Think about things that are pure and lovely and dwell on the fine good things in others. Think about all you can praise God for and be glad about that. Man, I love that because, you know, we always say count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Here he's reminding us and telling us, think about all you can praise God for. That will take your mind off this pandemic. That will take your mind off how tight this month is gonna be, how business isn't where it's supposed to be. Fix your thoughts on who cares the most about you and, and think about how you can praise God for all the good. Don't turn around and say, well, I've got nothing to praise God for. If you've got breath in your lungs tonight, you already have a reason to be praising God. If you've got health, if you've got your family, if you've lost family, you still can praise God because if they knew Jesus, you know where they've gone, amen? And you know what? There's a lot of negativity that can fill our minds at the moment more than ever before. The world is in trouble. It's in trouble on many fronts, and then there's this pandemic. People are depressed. Uh, you know, people are suicidal. I saw on the news this week that three university students took their own lives because of the depression brought on by this terrible pandemic, and they obviously couldn't see their future. But you know, we've got to believe that there is a future for us and that God is drawing us towards that future, amen. You know, it is possible to renew our minds and our thinking. Uh, you know, I know, I also have a challenge in this area where my mind just goes down a road, but it is possible, and we need to ask God to take control of our thoughts. When you wake up in the morning, one of the first things you need to do, and that I will do, is to say, Lord God, help me with my thinking today. Lord, help me to focus on the beautiful things in life. Help me to focus on your word and think about that and meditate about that. Now, Romans 12, verses one and two, is very powerful and very helpful in helping us to understand how this can be made possible. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. Let me just stop there. You know, when you give your heart to Jesus, your life is no longer your own. You've been bought with a price. Let's not be like the world who argues about the word of God and argues with 
fellow Christians and argues about that does not mean that's not what it says, no. We are on an altar, we are living sacrifice. We mean to be holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship, amen. Then it says, do not conform any longer because very clearly we all have conformed to the pattern of this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. There is a battle being fought for a strategic area of our lives. The outcome will determine the course of our lives. It is the battle for our minds. Our minds are a battlefield. There is a battle for our attention. There is a battle for our affection. And it is the battle that the enemy wants us to believe we are losing. Don't ever, ever give in to that thought that you are in a losing battle because you know what? The outcome of the battle will determine the quality of your Christian life. Win this battle and your Christian walk will be filled with blessing, joy, and satisfaction. Lose this battle, then your Christian walk will be filled with spiritual poverty, frustration, and immaturity. Don't give up as it is a battle that we must win. That is why we need to constantly be renewing our minds. That is also why we must put on the armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness. You know, we've spoken about it, and at the youth conference last week, Pastor Harrison shared a beautiful message on that. You can actually go and watch that on, on YouTube. Well, Proverbs 23 verse 7 says, as he, she thinks in his, her heart, so is he. If you believe negative things about your life, about your past, just remember your past may have been negative, but God has turned it all around for you as you have cooperated with him. You don't need to live with guilt. You don't need to live with regret because God has taken what you have done as far as the east is from the west. Amen? Amen. Your present, maybe, and your future is negative all the time. There's no hope for this country. There's no, don't ever say that. Because in one day, God can turn everything around, as we heard a couple of years ago, Michelle, at, at the women's conference. You know, if you keep on believing that your life is defeated and it's all hopeless, um, I just need to say this. The Lord wants overcomers and victorious disciples. So we can't give up. We mustn't give up. Don't give up. I love what um, in her book, Battlefield of the Mind, Joyce Meyer wrote. She said, don't give up in capital letters. When the battle seems endless and you think you'll never make it, remember that you are reprogramming a very carnal, fleshly, worldly mind to think as God thinks Impossible? No. Difficult? Yes. But just think, you have God on your team. I believe he is the best computer programmer around. Your mind is like a computer that has had a lifetime of garbage programmed into it. God is working on you, at least he is, if you invited him to have control of your thoughts. He is reprogramming your mind. Just keep cooperating with him and don't give up. You know, it is our responsibility. Amen? Now, we need to get onto that altar. And we need to say, I'm a living sacrifice. My life is not my own. And we need to offer our bodies and our minds and our lives to the living God, and he will transform our lives, and renew our lives. Can I have an amen Amen. from God's gorgeous girls on staff? My second thought this evening is we need to renew our sight. Now, I want to focus on renewing the way we see people tonight. Obviously, I had to 
just cut things down a little bit for the sake of time. Well, the reason I want to focus on people tonight is because people are at war with each other today. Social, or should I say anti-social media, is so hostile and hateful, and you know, the word actually says in the last days, the love of many people will grow cold. Even Christians can be hateful and hostile, I've noticed, on Instagram, on Facebook, you know, and if we're not careful, we will catch that into our spirits, where we just get onto the bandwagon and we start attacking people and we miss, actually, we miss the point of what they're actually even saying, but we're getting onto the person that's now beginning the attack, you know, and, and, and it really, it, it, we must watch for that because we're reading this stuff and we are then getting onto the bandwagon of how to break people down because we don't see people correctly, amen. And so, you know, it's so important that we renew the way that we see people. There's an account uh, in the Word of how Jesus healed a blind man, and we read about that in Mark chapter 8, verses 23 to 25. It says, he took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village, when he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were open, his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. I think there comes a time when we need to ask God to help us see everything clearly. The most important area is to see people clearly. People are who Jesus came for, to save, to heal, to restore. It's all about people, amen. And, and we are all different, and we need to learn acceptance and love our neighbor as ourselves. Let's not forget what the word tells us we should be doing, how we should be viewing people. We should view them as valuable as we think we are. Amen? And we must remember that we too once were blind and now we see. Now let's not see people as trees now. We can see, but they're just objects. They're just in the way. They're such a nuisance. No, God doesn't want us, you know, to, to be like that. This blind man saw people as trees, but we need to see people clearly not like trees. People are not objects, and so we need to treat people, even if we disagree with them, with kindness and with mercy. That is what Jesus did for us. You know, we always hear that what God wants to do in our lives is to, to make us more like his son, Jesus, to imitate to Jesus. And, and we mustn't forget that. We mustn't forget that we're here to be imitators of God. I mean, not of this world, not the narrative of this world to be cool and hip and woke and happening. <laughs> Philippians 2, verses 4 to 8. Paul is writing and he's saying, each of you should not only look to your own interests, but also the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus who being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. A very good example, amen? Amen. So let's renew the way we see people, girls, with yeah. compassion and kindness, and in so doing, imitate our Lord Jesus. What South Africa needs more than anything is for us to have mercy, not to get irritated with people, not to point out their blindness, how they can't see this and they can't see that, but to have mercy and actually to pray for them. Ask God to, to reveal himself to them so that they can see him for who he is. Number three, renew our speak. Now, 
What do I mean by that? Because we don't use this term so much anymore. It used to be a term we used a lot at Rivers. You know, watch your speak. Now, we need to renew our speak because our tongue can be our own worst enemy. And, and it can be full of criticism. It can lack grace and kindness. It can lie and exaggerate. Uh, and because of people's hardship and bitterness, you know, they can allow their words to be unacceptable to God. That includes me, you know. And I love David's Psalm 19 because it, it puts it so beautifully in a prayer. Verse 14, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. It's a prayer we can all pray every single day. Lord, may the words of my mouth, it's a song we used to sing many, many years ago. I think David must have known that what the heart is full of, full of the mouth will speak. And David needed renewal. He knew that if God created a steadfast spirit in him, he would think differently, he would see differently, and he would speak differently. And Jesus, in teaching in Matthew chapter 12, 34, he said, for out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. You see, because our speak will only change when there's a difference in our hearts. Amen? So he said, the good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him, and the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. But I tell you that men will have to give an account on the day of judgment for every careless word they have spoken, for every careless word they have spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. I read that, not that I'm going to focus on it, but it's also another sealer moment. We can't just bugle or goggle and just let words come out and, and think it's okay because there's, pay, there's going to be payment for that, amen, and payment that we cannot afford. We also read in Ephesians chapter 4 that we can grieve the Holy Spirit. I haven't contemplated or meditated on that for quite a long time that what comes out of my mouth, my reactions, my words, it can actually grieve the Holy Spirit. In fact, push the Holy Spirit away from me. Amen. So as we come to a close this evening, the most important area of renewal is renew our love and commitment to God. And the way to do that is to recommit our hearts to Him, to renew our vows to Jesus because we are his bride. Isn't that beautiful? He is the groom of heaven, and we are his beautiful bride, and, and we just need to renew our vows to him. And if you've turned back from God, you've turned away from the Lord, humbly pray to God with a contrite heart. And contrite is a very interesting word. It means remorseful, repentant and sorry. And, and you know, in, in Psalm 51, the psalm that I'm not actually going to quote tonight, but Psalm 51 is a psalm of David after he had sinned against God uh, by committing adultery with Bathsheba and by causing her husband to be killed. So he was not only an adulterer, but he was also a murderer. And then he came to God with this contrite heart. And he said, a contrite heart and a broken spirit you will not despise. And so tonight, I don't know where you find yourself. I, I don't know what has happened. But what you can do tonight is you can make a genuine commitment to serve God as a disciple. And you can do that if you've never done that before, by the way. And, and, and say to yourself, I'm not just going to be a believer because I, I do believe. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that he rose from the dead. I believe that he's coming back to take his people back to, to be with him in heaven. But you know what? You want to be a disciple of God. You want to be a dis disciplined one, uh, not just a believer. You want to start walking in his word and applying the principles of Jesus you want to start standing on the promises of God. And, and you know, if you, if you do that now, and you're genuine about it, you get onto that altar, 
You sort out your thinking. Uh, you, you sort out how you see people and, and what comes out of your mouth. And, and now you're making this commitment. You won't have to keep going back to this thing all the time, back to this thing all the time, back and forth in the kingdom. You know, for a month you're serving God and you're not hanging out with people who don't serve God, by the way. And it's a good thing to perhaps find new friends who do serve God because that will help you all together join a connect group, but it will help you all together to stay on the path. We encourage one another. We need one another. We can't do this, especially now online, whether it's Zoom or however. We want to do this thing for God. Do you know what God's, what Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 10? He says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. You see, that's a promise I want to stand on. I want to believe God for the best for my life. I want to believe God that he wants to renew me. He wants to reset me. He wants to recharge me. (laughs) He wants to refresh me. He wants us free from guilt. And he wants us free from regret. He wants us to dance and rejoice in his presence, even in our lounge room, in our bathroom. He has turned my morning into dancing. Amen. He wants us in wide open spaces, enjoying abundant life with renewed thinking and with renewed hearts. Amen. And all it takes is a decision. And we will pray tonight, and we're going to help you, all of us together, we are going to help you to make that decision tonight. I'm going to be a disciple of Jesus. I'm doing this for the very first time. My eyes have been opened. This is marvelous. I can't wait for you to pray, Pastor Vilma, or you're just coming right back to the Lord again. And so we're going to pray. Father God, and you can pray after me. Father God. Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you came. I open my heart to you right now. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. I ask you to help me, Lord, to be the person that you always intended for me to be. The best me because of you, and Lord, help me with the way that I'm going to think, the way I'm going to see, the way I'm going to speak in the days ahead, because I want to be, a, 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 I want to be pleasing to you. I want to be a sacrifice on that altar. And tonight, Lord, As I recommit my life to you, I renew my vows to you, the things that I promised to you. Thank you that I have another chance, another go, and your Holy Spirit is right here helping me to make this decision. Lord, I will jot down this day the 25th of June, 2021, as a turning point in my life. I receive you now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, you know, we are already clapping for you if you've done this because by faith we know. And you know what? We want you to comment and we want you to scan the QR code to WhatsApp and visit the website for the salvation brochure just to help you, amen? And so we're so excited that you tuned in tonight and um, I trust that some of you are wiping some tears from your eyes because you have gone before the Lord in a contrite and in a repentant way and that you even got onto your knees. We applaud you. And so many of us have done that, and so many of us have recommitted our lives when we feel we've grown cold in the Lord, and so we're just so excited for you. Now, we've prayed, we've done the altar call, I wish you were here, we would have given you some cupcakes, 
But what, what can we do now? We can give you something tomorrow, though. <laughs> so here is the magazine. It is beautiful. It's full of gorgeous stories and articles. It's full of beautiful scriptures. It's going to encourage you. It's going to tell you about Sisters of Africa Conference because this is not just a magazine called Sisters of Africa because it's a cute name. But it really is meant to help people get on board with this conference, whether it's online or in person. And this year it's it's, it's online, and it's going to be our best conference. We have to believe that. And, you know, I have to say this, and, and, and I've got a little bit of time. I have to say this. Um, you know, we have had two online conferences, and with humility, Pastor Andre is sitting over there, I need to say, this ain't going to be like that. <laughs> it's going to be all that. Because our guest speakers are going to each bring two messages. We're going to have a full program. It's going to be days, well, not days. It's going to be nights just to give you time to work from home and do what you have to do with your children. And in the evening, grab whatever you enjoy and watch online and be part of what's happening. And your children's conference is completely free of charge. And don't think because it's free of charge, it ain't going to be fantastic. There's Pastor Bridget. There's, where is Pastor Nat? There's Pastor Nat on my, on my right. Sorry, my darling. <laughs> it's going to be fantastic. Amen. Okay. So what I thought I would do is, because we have these gorgeous girls that have participated in the freezing cold, going into waterfalls and... Um, you know, it looks all glamorous and everything. They made real sacrifices getting up what time in the morning? I don't know. I don't remember. Five, six. And, and I have done two shoots. Those two that Stephanie and B uh, have, have been so faithful in that. And let's start with you, um, Stephanie, because you're on the page now, the front page. I mean, look at that. Who's this beautiful girl? I mean. So tell us where you serve in church. Um, I serve in Kids Zone yeah. in Kailami. Kids Zone in Kailami, and you serve with your? <laughs> I'm serving with my husband. Well, isn't yes. that beautiful? Yes. And I love that you serve yes. with your husband. Have you enjoyed these uh, photo shoots? Oh, yes, I really did. It was a beautiful journey working with the staff. And um, yeah, I think I've learned so much about myself. I didn't think I was able to do the things that I did. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm normally a very shy person, um, but it has really brought out another side of me, and it also allows me to see myself in a different light. And Beautiful. And I'm grateful to God Beautiful. for that. Fabulous. And in B, you want to just share with us what were your thoughts when you were asked? Well, first tell us where do you serve? I'm sure everyone saw tonight if you watch worship. <laughs> Um, I serve in the worship team. <laughs> yep. So what were your thoughts when you were asked to be part of the shoot? Uh, my first thought was, oh my gosh, I'm not photogenic. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I really enjoyed the process. I think I was very happy to be part of the church, um, you know, be involved in the ministry, even though like, we haven't physically been in the church um, for over a year. And it was so much fun. I think, yeah, that's fantastic. Well, thank you. Thank you for making those sacrifices. I think I might just be the stage hand here. Yeah? They have one, okay. Will you keep holding it? Thank you. All right, so who's next? Candace. Candace, yes. where do you serve? Who are you married to? Tell us everything. I'll tell you everything, okay. So I serve in youth, young adults, and junior youth. And I've been serving for the past 15 years. Um, I am married to a very handsome man. Yes. And please thank him for releasing you and you, and you, yes. for this, and you, yes. for this, because they're always, always, always there at youth and young adults. Yes, so very grateful, but um, we love being able to sneak into sisters every now and then. Um, but yeah, I love serving, um, being in the, in the magazine, you just see behind the scenes. Everybody sees a pretty picture, 
No one knows what was going on that day. It was cold, um, but we had the best team around us, and just they, they were bringing us coffee and hot chocolate and just loving on us. So we were just so grateful That's to be beautiful. a part of that. So thank you for the privilege. You are very welcome. Adrian? Okay, I'm Adrian. I've been in church for 18 years now, since I was five years old. Um, I can't remember the day I start serv started serving, but I feel like I've always been serving since I was in Kid Zone. Um, and yeah, so being part of the magazine, it was just such a privilege, and we just had such an amazing group of um, God's gorgeous girls with us, so it was just such a privilege to just work with the team, and it was really just so fun to be able to do that. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. And Genevieve. Yes, I'm Genevieve, and I serve in youth young adults and junior youth, and dance. I serve on the dance team as well, yes. <laughs> we won't forget that one. But yes, I serve on the dance team as well. Um, and when I was first asked to be in the sister shoot, I think always the first reaction is, oh, oh me. But I think as soon as you, you know, you think about it, you're like, wow, this is actually such an honor. And it's always such an incredible experience. Like Candace said, the team around you is amazing to see Simi and everyone else who puts the work into it afterwards. It's just really, really incredible. So yes, thank you again, Pastor Boma. Beautiful. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, girls. And just, just, I did that because I want those who perhaps don't know who they are and why they were used, it's because they plugged in and they disciples of the Lord Jesus, they sold out and really committed and, and I, I don't have to feel embarrassed that they're going to do something that will just bring our church and the kingdom into disrepute and so um, I really do appreciate each and, each and, each and every one of them. Well, just a reminder that tomorrow is the magazine drive-through. Uh, you, you'll be able to see the, the times, I think, to the side screens. You can, and well, do they look at the side screens when they're at home? <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit of fun. But Durban North is, 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 has a different time to us, and uh, the next sisters will be the 30th of July, and who knows what it's going to look like, but... You know, however it's going to be, it's going to have our hearts poured into it, and it's going to be to encourage you to place value on you uh, as a God's, God's gorgeous girls, got tongue tied there, as God's gorgeous girls, and also first time visitors just to suck you in with the love of God and make you part of who we are and what we want to do um, for other women. So, the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you, lift his countenance on you and give you his peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Stay safe and be strong.